Hello friends. I got a package. Uh, I got a big package. It seems like I might have to reset the camera. Take two. I got a big package, friends. And we're going to uh, explore it together. know what this is by the description. Did I mention I hated packing peanuts? Did I mention that? This package actually seems a bit light for what it is. So I'll have to Although it is missing parts that we have to yeah, see, isn't this lovely? Now, if you get um, airbags, you know, the, instead of you got choice of packing peanuts or those airbag things, those airbags are actually they're made of plastic. Aren't these biodegradable, these things, though? So, I mean, technically, that might be better for the environment. Comment below. Um, in packet peanuts used to be made out of styrofoam, and I think they changed to that different design specifically because it's biodegradable. So I'm liking the way this is packed. I really am liking it. Yeah, he taped and packed the heck out of this, so that's really appreciated. Jeffrey, if you're watching, assuming that this Amiga is everything you said it was, and let's assume that, then uh, well, thank you for sending us this in such a nice, uh, nicely packed fashion. So he said it works as far as... Um, Bought it off of eBay. The gentleman said it worked, uh, except that there's no hard drive in it, he said. So you turn it on and you get the 3.0 or 3.1 ROM uh, kickstart screen. And, uh, you know, because we already bought some, some compact flash adapters for our last video series. Oops, I got a male and a female. I'm sure it's going to take the male. Um, we can uh, we can test this out with a compact flash card, and uh, and we can also even now just test it out with a floppy. So, I mean, it's in good enough condition. I I, I don't not, I guess I'm not really concerned about it having a short or something in it. Normally, I do like to check that first, but I think we'll go a little risky on this one. So let's uh, let's get a power supply and. Uh, and we've got a video video adapter here already, so just take a look at this thing. This case is really nice. I mean, it's got some scuffs and scratches on it, but it certainly doesn't have a lot of yellowing on it. There's a little bit on the keys, but if it's if it's even, relatively even, I don't usually worry about it. Although I don't know if you can see that on camera. Like the G is more yellow than the F and the H. The lighting I have in here is an LED, 
but it ha it's a warm LED, so unfortunately it has kind of an incandescent tinge to it, or color temperature. Um, yeah, you could see how these keys are a little yellower than these ones. So that might activate my OCD. Uh, I might want to wash the keys in some hydrogen peroxide or peroxide gel or whatever I choose to do. Disk drive, serial port, parallel port, video. Video. And supposedly this just uses the same power supply that an Amiga 600 does, which is essentially the same power supply that an Amiga 500 has, except Amiga 500s started off with linear power supplies and then they came out with switch mode ones, and perhaps the switch mode ones are powerful enough, or perhaps not, perhaps they are too weak, but definitely a A600 power supply. Now I did have an A600 power supply. Unfortunately, I don't anymore. I must have sold it with one of my Amigas. I probably did. The last Amiga 500 I sold, I probably sold it with that. I just gave Brad, or sold Brad, uh, another Amiga 500 power supply that I had upgraded to mean, a Meanwell in, internal. Um, so the one I'm going to test it with has a Meanwell, um, but I don't have a spare for this computer, so I'm going to upgrade another power supply. I have another A500 linear Euro 220 volt power supply that I'm going to convert to Meanwell specifically for this A1200. We have mice. I can get an optical mouse. Uh, that's what I sell on my eBay store. Um, and we can we have the ability to add a hard drive pretty easy with a compact flash. So, uh, oh, he, one thing he did say is, is that the floppy drive was bad. So that's a little bit disconcerting because, yeah, come to think of it, I can't test it with a floppy disk. Um, yeah, so we just need to verify that this thing works, how much of it works, how much of it doesn't. Maybe we can repair the floppy drive. Who knows? Um, the floppy drive does look like it's present. It is there. So, uh, yeah, we're going to go... And yeah, one thing that I always thought was kind of cool about the A1200 is, is that it has a PCM-CIA slot. The Amiga 1200 comes with an IDE interface on the inside um, that, that normally these came with a hard drive. Uh, I think you could probably order them without, right? They always come with them. But anyway, um, so a 44-pin cable inside and a place to mount, I guess, a laptop style 2.5 inch IDE hard drive. And uh, that made it really useful. Who's this? That was a phone call. Somebody needed some help. I tried to be helpful. My day job is a communications technician, I guess you could call it. All right. No power there. Anyway, let's see if this thing works. Hey, what are you doing up there so high? You can come on down off of that ladder. Because we don't need to... We don't need to zoom out for this giant box. That box was overkill, huh? He could have cut it in half. Uh, it was a U-Haul box, so the guy isn't a regular shipper because he wouldn't be getting his boxes from U-Haul. All right, so we got video, and we're going to turn it on. Okay. We have a signal. We have power. There. Oh, it does have three zero ROM. Okay. What was that noise? I think it was the drive. Aren't the uh, floppy drives in the uh, AGA machine supposed to to click also? Yeah, that ain't gonna work. Yeah, that doesn't sound right, that floppy drive. 
So I see people, I don't even know this because you got to give me a break. I'm not familiar with an A1200. This is a learning experience for me. You're probably yelling at me now on the screen, but uh, the uh, I know that AGA machines had an option for high density disc floppies. Of course, you can always use a double density disc in a, in a high density drive. Uh, you know, I think wasn't the eight, the high density drives only in the 4000, isn't that right? And this was still a double density. Because I know people on eBay are selling uh, floppy drives, internal floppy drives for A500 slash 600 slash 1200. And so you'd assume that um, that, that would, it would be a double density drive that's identical to the 500. But it would surprise me if it was the same exact drive, is it? Anyway, I don't have any internal A500. I just sold my last one to Brad. But they're not super expensive. Um, but why would I bother with it when I have the option, easy option of doing a GoTec? Um, well, easy. It's always easier to put a GoTec in a big box, Amiga. But, um, you know, I certainly have the ability to do whatever mods I need to to the GoTec itself to put something in here that's nice. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's obviously the best course of action would be to simply uh, run this off of a GoTech for right now, especially. So that means we need to take the cover off. And so the trap door, that's for the, uh, the memory expansion, right? So uh, do we have a, a surprise in here? Mm -hmm. No, I didn't think there would be. So, there's no such thing as slow RAM on a uh, an AGA machine. Am I right about that, or am I totally wrong about that? You could put like eight megs of fast RAM in here if you wanted to, or something. Not a super concerning thing. Uh, people make. Um, those. What's this empty thing here? It's an empty thing. Is that for some kind of internal peripheral? There's no point in leaving a comment. By the time you watch this video, I will <laughs> know enough about these things to have answered all these questions. Uh, that doesn't seem like the... Oh, wait, that's... I think we need to leave that in there. I'm thinking that that is a sheet metal screw and that's holding the floppy drive in actually. All these others are uh, self-tapping, what they call, sometimes they call them self-tapping uh, screws. This is an adventure because I've never taken one of these apart. What are these black screws? Are these supposed to be? This one isn't in all the way. So we got a mismatched screw, probably. It's a little long. It's longer than the other ones. And it wasn't, they're not in all the way. Well, we have a solution for that too. But uh, got all kinds. That's the thing. When you throw something away, um, I mean, if you like to rebuild stuff and fix stuff, you're going to encounter stuff that has missing screws. And so uh, what you do is when you go to recycle e-waste something or throw something away, uh, you remove the screws out of it and have a box of screws because all these old things have these weird, oh, have these screws. Yeah, that's right. Floppy. That's cool. And the screws are very similar. They're usually all the same size. Uh, you know number six or whatever they are <clears throat> but I got a ton of these things I think this is even the same size that come that the Gotex are screwed in with ribbon cable okay so um, yeah no problem this is kind of cool uh, Macklin test and repair center 
Well, that's cool. It's got a repair label on it. Um, 10 of 93, Macklin Test and Repair Center. And its center is spe spelled with C-E-N-T-R-E. -E. So that's the European English spelling of that word. Um, and this is com and 173 in red slash 204 in black. I don't know what that is. It's weird. Uh, and this is a chinon, which is known as, those are pretty good drives in my experience. Um, FZ3354, yeah. That seems like the same the same model number as the one for the 500. So we happen to have a GoTech laying around because we always have one. And pretty easy deal here to replace it temporarily. So let's put our thing in here, desk, and we're going to plug her back in here. I'll just leave that over there. Okay, let's give it a shot, shall we? Okay, here we go. We're plugged in with video. We got this, that, and the other thing. Our GoTex on. And it's not, it's loading. Yeah, perfect. Okay. So we can uh, test things, right? Um, we can look at our memory. We got, this is exactly correct. Yeah, two megabytes of chip and no fast or slow. Yeah. And this is interesting because um, I think the, uh, You, know, you can test the memory. It should go pretty quick because there's only two megs there. Um, yeah, so it's only taking like five seconds to check the two megs. Each point is, is another check. And uh, each decimal. But you want to make it go through the, the primary, the, 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 the uh, whole number. At least get to round two to know. But that's pretty much it. Okay, so um, let's just see if all the keys work on the keyboard. Okay, uh, control and left alt. And it looks like we have, I, there's no ribbon cable in here. Let's turn this thing off. Should I try again? Should I load workbench? Um, so I was talking about, for those who don't know, and again, this is, uh, osmosis is how I know this. I, I don't know the Amiga 1200 or AGA machines um, because I directly studied them, but I'd be looking for something else, like I'd be looking for something for my CD32, and it would say, oh, this is a 1200, um, you know. So there's, a, there's an IDE connector right here, and a place to put a, uh, a laptop drive right there. So the IDE connector, um, I think we can slide this in there. We might have to move the heat shield. But I think I already have a card set up um, that would probably boot. So I think that's the next thing to try, yeah? Oh, and by the way, uh, at this point we have reached the point where we can thank Jeffrey. Is that his name? Jeff? Um, everything. I'm not used to this. Yeah. I won't say his last name, but anyway. Shout out to Jeffrey who sold this. Uh, I paid a lot of money for it. 
hoping that it was a fully functional A1200. It's the appropriate amount for a fully functional. Some people have actually paid more. Very few have paid less. Um, uh, perhaps a little expensive for one that didn't actually include anything, a power supply or anything. But seeing as how I have an extra power supply and an extra mouse, you know, and these things just don't come up that often here in the States. And when they do, they're super expensive. I mean, me just adding this compact flash card, I mean, I could, you know, people are asking $1,000 for them and stuff like this. I didn't pay that much, so. I'm embarrassed <laughs> with how much I paid. But, anyway. I don't think I'm shorting on anything. I mean, the, the EMI shield, again, I'm using this stupid one that has a female and it'll plug straight into the header. Um, so the EMI shield isn't shorted anywhere. And that's the only concern I have. There is some, a, what is this, the RF, RF modulator? Yeah, the RF modulator is kind of sticking out and kind of in the way, but it's, it's just a circuit board. I'm circuit board against circuit board, edge of an edge. So, uh, yeah, I think I'm okay. Pretty sure about it. If anything, I haven't got it down far all the way um, because of clearances, but... I may have it down all the way, actually. No, I don't think so. I think it's sticking up a little bit. Let's see. Oh, and, you know, there's a there's a delay on the boot um, before it went to floppy. And I guess that's because it didn't see a hard drive, because I, I think that's... Let's see if we got a light. We got a red light over here. But, unfortunately, it's solid red, so... That means that it's not going to work. And actually, we don't have a, uh, a video signal. Why would that be? Why wouldn't we have a video signal? Unless I am actually shorting on something. Ooh. Ooh, the compact flash is a little warm. That's not supposed to happen. Uh, yeah, why would that be? Unless this one, I mean, even if it's reversed, I've never had that happen. These things, you can reverse them and it doesn't blow anything up. I guess I'm going to confirm what or pin one is on this uh, 1200. There is a one down here um, on the board. So you would think, and I thought that that's where the one is. And I'm matching it up with this. This has uh, pin one is over here. So I took this same one, it's just a different gender, and put it that way. I mean, because that's what you would assume would be the right way. But before I proceed, I'm going to confirm that that's pin 1. Um, I do have this left over from the uh, Terrible Fire 330. And yeah, from what I can tell, I've seen a couple of things where the pin 1 is down here. So I don't know what's going on, man. Well, I've never seen a compact flash heat up. There might actually be something wrong with this Amiga 1200, you know? What the heck? Right? So, let's try this. The A1200 is not recognizing the compact flash, and we have a solid LED on the compact flash adapter. So the Terrible Fire 536 that I was just doing a video on, it, this is doing exactly the same thing. Now this is a this has a bootable workbench on it. So this is the card that came. This is the adapter that came with my Terrible Fire 330, the Terrible Fire accelerator for the CD32. And it says adapter VH2. 
And on the one I bought from Amazon that doesn't seem to work with anything is VB1. Yeah. I mean to look at them, the one thing that this the one oops, the ones that seem okay, so so Brad's Terrible Fire 536 came with a compact flash card that looked like this one. It had two transistors, supposedly for the LED circuit. And uh, it worked, but the LED didn't work. This one has no transistors. Um, and it works, and it does light up. And this one with two transistors doesn't work at all. And this one, which has the same model number, this one with the male or female pins, is pretty much identical to this one. So I wonder why this one, you'd think this one would work. They really are identical. Um, the gender's wrong, that's all. Flash. It's still not, maybe that card, maybe I don't have something on that card. I thought I did. Well, I decided to hold both mouse buttons down and uh, yeah, I mean, we're almost there. Um, oh, <laughs> I should probably eject the, uh, the, the floppy disk. <laughs> I don't know why I do that all the time. It's loading the floppy because it has a higher boot priority. All right, here we go. Now we're booting off the uh, good. Hmm. 3.0 ROMs. So, if I'm trying to load 3.1, um, I don't know. Let me, uh, let me just redo this card. I'll look on it first. I'll boot from WinUAE and look at it and see what it has. But basically, we're... We're good here. I don't know why this doesn't work and why it was making the compact flash card hot. That doesn't make any sense. Maybe this one is bad. But I'm looking for the compact flash adapter VH2. I'll go and get on my computer and um, do some research. But for now, I'll pause this video and I'll come right back. Okay, it is as I thought. Um, uh, this compact flash had Workbench 3.9, which you can't operate on 3.0 ROMs, Kickstart 3.0 ROMs. So let's just flip it on now and see what we get. Yeah, instantaneous booting. I love 3.1. Highly underrated. So there we go. Sorry, I don't have any problems with this <laughs> Amiga. Why? I just have to find the right compact flash for it, uh, compact flash adapter. But this thing is ready and raring to go. There is absolutely nothing wrong with it. So just to reiterate, um, if you boot an Amiga and you just get the workbench bar, top of the bar workbench, and you're not sure, you know, you got 3.0 ROMs and you're not sure what's on the compact flash. Well, you can pretty much guarantee you that a 3.9 or maybe 3.5 also would do that. But anyway, so you, have, you need 3.1 ROMs to boot uh, 3.5 and 3.9. But I just installed 3.1 on this and, uh, and it works great.
So I guess the next thing to do is because I already bought a copy of 3.1.4 ROM and Workbench for the A1200, I may as well use it in here, right? Um, so uh, I think on these AGA machines there's two ROM chips, is that right? So you got to split up the thing and put it on the, the ROMs and, you know, I've already done a video on how to make one ROM chip that's split in half, but um, burning two ROM chips, well I gotta find the ROM chips first, ones that are compatible, and then I can go ahead and burn uh, what I need to on there. And so we'll go ahead and upgrade this to 3.1.4. So I ordered one that was labeled VB, B as in boy one, VB1, and this didn't work on the Terrible Fire 536, and it also didn't work on an Amiga 1200. However, VH2 seems to work fine. That was the model number of the one that we had in our Terrible Fire 536 video, the one that was working that came with the, with the board. It didn't have an LED working for some reason. And, uh, and indeed, the uh, VH2 does work in the 1200, whereas the VB1 does not. So, anyway. And of course, this, this one works in the Terrible Fire 330 and my CD32 as well. That's where one of these came from. I actually don't know. Oh, there it is. I wrote it down there. Yeah. So this is my CD32 there. That's where this came from. So, you know, just a piece of advice. You want to avoid the ones that say VB1 and get the ones that say VH2. They're both available on Amazon. So, now that we know we have a working Amiga 1200, I think uh, we'll end, probably end this video. Leave a comment below if uh, you have an opinion upon what we should do next. I guess it's a given that we're going to be putting a GoTech in here, so I guess the follow-up video will be that. But should I add an accelerator? What kind of accelerator? I hear there's RAM boards available that will double the speed of the Amiga just by adding RAM to it. And uh, that's, that's a, a nice cheap option, I think. But anyway, we'll see you later. Thanks for watching.